If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to sew along with you the Laura Jean by Sew Yours. This is such a fun and quick sew. It doesn't look like it will be a quick sew. She looks super complex, but she is so fast to put together. Um, let me so show you some of the amazing features of this bag. So my favorite thing about this is this front overlay where we have the zipper as well as it acts as our connectors on the back. I have two more connectors. Now keep in mind, these overlays and connectors are raw edge. You could definitely repeat this overlay panel on the back if you wanted to as well. I went ahead and you can see I edge painted. So it gave those raw edges a nice and clean finished touch. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> recess zipper. And on the inside, Look how big and wide and tight that lining is. Now, this is a great small to medium size bag, I think. We've got an overlay, zipper overlay on one side and a slip pocket with decorative accent on the other. Um, she is a birth bag. Finish is a boxed corners on both the lining and the bottom, as you can see. I just love how the bottom folds up and over and how it all matches up so perfectly on the sides there. Um, this one, uh, what did I do different in this one? I really wanted to, I was working out of my scrap bin for my vinyl. So there are a few things I had to do a little bit different because I did not have enough width or whatever of each color. So I did uh, two toned handles. The other thing I did different was my zipper panel. Now, Melissa does it all in one piece, but I did not have enough length to do the full piece. So I did my standard uh, zipper pocket or zipper panel uh, with two pieces of lining and two pieces of exterior, but that is different than the pattern. So you can do whichever way. They're both good. Um, what else? What else? Oh, the other thing I did different not really different is she births it through an opening in the bottom of the bag and then top stitch that shut now i show you how to do it for those who especially have carpal tunnel like i do i have the hardest time birthing a bag through a small opening so in this tutorial i show you a different method of leaving the entire lining bottom open and the zipper pocket open and then we close up that bottom including boxing those corners through that zipper pocket but i show you that i just like to say a few things i do different um, and the reasons why so the only reason i did different is because my arms are bothering me and that just makes for a super easy turn for me um, materials in this bag. Let's start with stabilizers. Very minimal interfacing. Of course, if you're using cotton, you'll want to use like an SF-101 or an EV Fuse Light. I didn't use any cotton in here, so I didn't have to do any of that woven interfacing. The main stabilizer is only on these front panels. Uh, the pattern calls for decable light. I used uh, Bouncy Firm from Serial Bag Makers. It's kind of like a mixture I always compare it, and I know you've probably seen it in my videos, that I always compare it to if Decaville Light and Foam had a baby, it would be called Bouncy Firm. So Bouncy Firm worked really nice for this, and it just gave it that little bit of squish, but Decaville Light or EB Fuse Heavy would work perfectly fine for this as well. Um, materials in this bag. My exteriors, my vinyls, are the Patina vinyl line from Galaxy Customs, the Distressed Patina line. It's my current favorite. So this one is Honey, and I wanna say this one is Mocha. I'm terrible with names, but they're in that line, and I just love that distressed look of it all. Um, it is a wonderful, domestic-friendly vinyl to work with. Um, my hardware, my zippers are from Blue Cala. My zipper pulls are from a Zipper Valley. Also from Zipper Valley is I did my lining in her new Dayflex material. I can't explain what this is. It's kind of, I don't know if you can hear that. It's like, I don't know. It is a water repellent 
uh, fabric. You do not need to interface it. Um, and it just kind of, I don't know, I really like it. It's a different kind of material. It's kind of like a canvas, but not like a canvas. Um, it's nice and satiny inside. So I just love the satin look that that Dayflex gives from Zipper Valley. Um, what else? Uh, all my other hardware is from Emmeline Bags. <laughs> <sighs> did I already mention the straps? I think so. So I did double-sided straps. The pattern does not have double-sided straps. Um, yeah, she goes together so fast. You have no idea. She looks so complex, but she completely is not. Thank you again, Melissa, for allowing me to do this tutorial. And I hope you guys really do like it. I also want to shout out to my... Uh, members who sponsor the channel. Thank you again. I couldn't do this without you. And how about we get to making uh, this bag? You're going to need some rivets, number five zipper tape, four rectangular rings, three zipper pulls, some strap ends, a zipper end and your nameplate. You're going to need your handles, your two exterior main panels, your two stabilizer main panels, your two exterior bottom main panels, your two lining top pieces, your two lining pieces, your zipper panels. Now I'm doing mine different, so I did two exterior and two lining for my zipper panels. Your slip pocket lining pieces as well as your overlay and accent pieces for the slip pocket and the interior lining piece, your main piece G, your connector piece there, and your two connectors if you're doing the connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my straps off camera. I'm doing them different than the pattern. If you need a course for that, it's down below in the description. Okay, so now I'm taking my pattern, my connector pieces here. I've got, already gone ahead and I have uh, already punched my rivet holes and applied double-sided tape as per the pattern. Um, I've also edge coated all of these. So what I'm gonna do is on that front uh, connector piece, on the bottom places where we punched out our uh, rivets, I'm gonna put some rivets in there, put the rectangle ring on, and then bring it wrong size together like so and match up where those uh, rivets go in. We're not setting those rivets yet. Trim up the bottom of that connector away from the zipper overlay part uh, if need be. And you will do the same. You take the rivets out and you do the same for the other three. Okay, so that is what that looks like. I'm also gonna just put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back. That's gonna help me hold it in place for when we attach this to the bag. Now we're going to pull out our main exterior and bottom panels. We're going to put them right sides together like so, matching up the long straight edges, clip them in place. And then with both of these, you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew across there with the seam allowance in the pattern, push it so the seam is going towards the bottom and top stitch through the bottom panel. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our fusible interfacing and we are going to center them on the back of both of these main panels, the front and back. Make sure the one with the opening is the one with the overlay and fuse those in place. Now we're going to go ahead and use the pattern for the placement of our connectors. So follow the instructions and the patterns of where to cut down on your pattern piece. And then we're going to use the pattern piece and take an erasable marking pen and mark where the placement of our connectors are going to go for the front and back panel. So make sure it's centered perfectly. Take your pen and make those markings. And then we're going to take our overlay piece. I'm going to take uh, the paper off the double-sided tape. 
and then you're going to line the connectors up with those markings making sure it is nice and straight stick it down i'm just going to double check that they are nice and straight down from the top which they are go ahead and remove the rest of the paper off the double-sided tape and secure it in place The next what we'll do is we will go ahead and we will top stitch the outer perimeter of this overlay, pulling our thread long to the back so we have a nice continuous line. Now we're going to do similar with the back connectors if you're doing the two separate connectors. So there are placement lines that get on your pattern piece. Use those to mark where you are going to be putting those two connectors. Line them up with the connectors and use the tape to help hold those in place for now. Once we're satisfied with our placement, we will, just like we're doing with the front, is we're going to go along the uh, outer perimeter and sew those in place, putting on a zipper foot or a narrow foot so we can get nice and close to the hardware.
Okay, so this is what that's done. I've already gone ahead and put my rivets in, backed with some scraps of Decable Heavy, my nameplate for the front and back. I've also installed my two zipper pockets, the lining and the exterior, and done my slip pocket. If you need tutorials on how to do those, they're down below in the description. Also, make sure you leave the bottom of that zipper pocket open if you're finishing the way I am. Now you can take the two exterior panels, put them right sides together, make sure the bottom panel seams line up so we have a nice and continuous line. Go ahead and clip together the left and right sides, again, taking special care that that bottom panel lines up. Also do the same with the bottom straight edge, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to stitch along the left, the right, and the bottom with the seam allowance in the pattern. This is that done. I also went ahead and I just basted my seams open for later on so we have less bulk. Now we just need to baste, or sorry, box the bottom corners. So what you're gonna do is bring together the bottom and the side seams, uh, kind of nest them together, one to one side, one to the other, and clip that box corner in place like so. Same with the opposite side, nest that seam. And then you'll go ahead and sew both, the, both of these box corners with the seam allowance in the pattern. And you will also see me go in with a second line of stitching, just an eighth of an inch in from that first line of stitching into the seam allowance, just to give a little added strength to those corners. like that that's all the sewing for that exterior so go ahead and turn this right side out double check that your box corners look really good and they're nice and crisp and sharp in those corners which mine are once you're happy with that what that looks like go ahead and set that aside for now Now, as I said earlier, I did my zipper panels different. I've gone ahead and done that. If you wanna see how I do them, I do have a tutorial on that down below in the description. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your finished zipper panels and your lining panels. So I've got my panel I want at the back of the bag. I have it right side up. I have my zipper panel that has the curvy part of my zipper going to the left, also right side up. And I'm gonna clip that on there nice and centered. Then I'm gonna take my top lining panel, I'm gonna put it right sides together, kind of sandwiching that zipper tape, adding it into the clips. Making sure the zipper tail is kind of down so you don't catch it. You do the same with the opposite side, except for the zipper panel tape will be curved to the right. You're gonna sew through there with the seam allowance in the pattern, put the seam towards the bottom of the lining and then top stitch it in place through the lining. That's that complete. Now we're gonna go ahead and just like we did with the exterior, we're going to put these right sides together and clip just the left and right sides, taking care that those top panel seams align up so we have a nice and continuous line. Again, I'm doing this slightly different in the pattern for easy turning, especially for those that have carpal tunnel like me. So we're gonna leave the full bottom of this unsewn and we're gonna finish this up at the end uh, through that opening we left in that zipper pocket. If you wanna do it the way the pattern is, make sure you follow in the pattern. So I've sewn together those sides. That's what she looks like. Now we're gonna take our exterior and we're gonna put it inside the lining, right sides together like so. You can see I've already butterflied out my side seams. That's gonna help with the bulk to make sure we don't have too much. We're gonna match up those side seams of the exterior in lining. Again, butterflying out those seams to reduce the bulk. Make sure your hardware is all kind of folded down into the bag. 
Same with the other side seam. And then you can go ahead and match up the front and back centers, making sure your zipper panels kind of push down and out of the way. You don't want to accidentally sew through that. Match up your front and your back. And then you're going to go ahead and evenly distribute the fabric in between those quarter sections all the way around. Once you have that all clipped in place, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna sew this with the seam allowance and the pattern. Now, if I was on my flatbed, I'd do it from the inside like this, but I'm gonna go ahead on my cylinder arm on the outside. You can do the same if you have a free arm. Once that is done and you're happy with that, go ahead and pull this right side out through the full open bottom. Kind of tug on that seam, make sure everything was caught and it looks good. If it does, go ahead and push the lining into the bag and you're going to, along that seam that we just sewn, kind of poke out all of that seam there to get that nice curviness we need for this bag and roll that seam between your fingers to prepare for top stitching and secure with clips all the way around. Now you can go ahead and you can top stitch in your preferred top stitching method all the way around with the seam allowance provided in the pattern.
Okay, so that is all done. Now we're gonna close up the bottom. This is different than the pattern. So you're gonna pull out your zipper pocket and then reach into that zipper pocket and pull out the entire lining, the bottom of the lining. First, you're gonna go ahead and line up the long bottom straight edge of this. We're boxing this exactly like we did with the exterior, except for we're doing it through a zipper pocket. So first, align up that long edge and then go ahead and sew along that long edge with the seam allowance in the pattern. Right along there. And then go ahead and box the corners in the exact same fashion we did with the exterior for both sides. Once that's done, stuff the bottom or the, it back in through that zipper and then fold over the, the raw edges of the zipper lining and top stitch the pocket closed. Now I've already gone ahead, I put on my zipper pull, my zipper end and my handles and that's it. That's, that is the fastest sew ever. So admire your work, make sure everything looks good, pat yourself on the back, such a satisfying quick sew. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and we're done. All right, that's it. That's all fast tutorial. Hey, again, she looks so complex, but she completely is not such an easy so i would say this is a beginner so like it is it is just so nice um yeah so if at any time you did like this video please do give me a thumbs up if you haven't already please do subscribe um if you'd like to support my channel further you could always buy me a coffee or you can be a, a sponsor of the channel by becoming a member there's lots of content on the membership side so make sure you check that out to see if there's anything there that sparks your interest and until the next one Catch you guys again. Bye.